Hi, friends. Welcome. We are so glad you are joining in for this event. And I hope you're ready because we have a very special guest joining us. He's an author, an illustrator that you know creates some of the most fun and exciting stories around. From a young T-Rex going to school for the first time to a big grumpy bear, his characters are always full of personality and charm. But wait, there's more. We want to hear from you. In the chat, let us know who your favorite character is from Ryan Higgins' books. Who do you love the most? Shout it out, tell a friend, and be sure to drop your questions in the chat too. We would love to know, and we're gonna be asking Ryan those questions later. Okay, friends, get ready because it's time to meet the one and only New York Times bestselling author, Ryan T. Higgins. Let's give him a huge virtual round of applause and welcome him to the show. Over to you, Ryan. Hi. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much um, for, for joining in. I'm so glad you could be here. I'm getting a, a little list of all the folks that are that are uh, tuning in, and it's so great to see you all. I see that we've got uh, a condo, elementary school in Wisconsin. Hi, hello to Miss Daniel's class in El Paso, Miss Merrill's first graders from Florida. We've got kids tuning in from Egypt, wow, from all over the world. Uh, we've got uh, Mrs. Traverso's class out in Washington. We've got folks from Kansas, Arizona. There's Mrs. Cole's first grade class in Seattle, Mrs. Marino's fourth grade class in New Jersey, and many more. Uh, Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to be here. Um, my name is Ryan, and you can call me Ryan. And I, uh, I'm a picture book author. I make picture books. I'm an author and an illustrator. So that means, let's see, what do authors do? Authors write books, and they do another thing. They sleep in in the morning. And illustrators, what do they do? Uh, they draw pictures, and they do another thing. They work in their pajamas. So since I'm an author and an illustrator, I get to do some pretty cool stuff. I get to write stories, draw pictures, sleep in in the morning, work in my pajamas, and hang out with cool kids like you. It's a pretty cool job. Um, how did I get this job? Well, kids, was I born as an author and an illustrator? No. Believe it or not, I was born as a baby. And Babies are not very good at writing or drawing, are they? No, but they grow up into kids like you and they learn to write and they learn to draw. When I was your age, I was not the best artist in my class. I was not the best writer in my class, but I liked writing and drawing pictures more than the other kids, so I did it more. And when you do something a lot, what happens? You get better at it. That is why I have my super cool job um, making books and why my name gets to be on the cover of books like this. I'm a regular person. I have a really cool job because I work really hard and you can do that too. This is my plan for this part of the presentation. I'm going to read my newest book to you. It's called We Don't Lose Our Class Goldfish by me. After that, I'm going to draw a picture. You can draw along. So teachers, um, if your kids have papers nearby or anything handy they can draw with, grab that stuff and I will teach you how to draw Penelope. After that, um, I'm gonna be answering some questions from you. And then um, after that, we're gonna wrap it up and then we're gonna kick you out of here. Not really, I'm, we're not really gonna kick you out of here. What we'll do is we will kindly and politely ask for your teachers to kick you out of here. All right, here we go. Let's read We Don't Lose Our Class Goldfish by me. So the very first thing you're going to see are some drawings made by real children. Those are drawings from real kids. Some of them are my kids, some of them are my kids' friends, and some of them are kids who go to the school in the town we live in. All right, here we go. We Don't Lose Our Class Goldfish by Ryan T. Higgins. <clears throat> Penelope Rex was seven feet tall and covered in scales. Other than that, she was just like every other kid. And just like other kids, Penelope had lots of feelings. Some things made her feel sad. Some things made her feel happy. 
and some things made her feel afraid. For example, she was afraid of what might happen to her mother's back if she stepped on a crack. She was afraid William Amodo might be right about dinosaurs being extinct. But Penelope's biggest fear of all was Walter. Walter never blinked. Walter never talked, probably because he was a goldfish. And one time he bit Penelope's finger. And no matter which classroom supply Penelope needed, it always seemed to be right next to Walter's bowl. And here is a drawing that Penelope made about Walter. It's called Scary Things About Walter by Penelope. There are menacing fins, unblinky eyes, a hungry belly, and bitey teeth. Then one afternoon, Mrs. Noodleman announced, we're all going to take turns bringing Walter home for the weekend. Mabel, you'll go first. Oh, Penelope couldn't take Walter home. What if he tried to nibble her again? Or turn her into dino nuggets while she was sleeping? <laughs> the weekends swam by. One by one, her classmates took Walter home. So there's one little girl holding Walter in a fishbowl, and she says, I took Walter to Jurassic Burgers. And the next little boy says, Walter and I played hide and seek. And that last little boy says, I tried to pet Walter. And if you look closely, he's all covered in band-aids. So we don't know how those got there. Could be any reason. <clears throat> when the big day arrived, Penelope couldn't pay attention in school. She spilled her juice. She accidentally chewed her pencil and her notebook and her desk. All she could think about was Walter. When the school day ended, there was no escaping her weekend with Walter. <clears throat> Penelope tried to do her usual things. Look in that back corner there. You can see Walter peeking from behind the closet door. A little bit creepy. When that didn't work, she tried to keep Walter distracted. See, there she is having a tea party, listening to music. Um, and then there's a picture of her pushing Walter in a swing and then she's pushing him in a carriage and she's playing fetch with him. I don't think goldfish are very good at fetch. Anyways, distracted goldfish are less bitey. It wasn't going well. And now for tonight's feature presentation, Attack of the Killer Goldfish. Then it was time for bed. Good night, Walter. Click. Splish, bloop, splash. What was that? Skitter, bloop, bloop. Walter? W Walter, Walter, is that you? Click. Ah! Look, Walter's bowl got a little closer. That's kind of, I don't know how that happened. <clears throat> Penelope decided Walter might enjoy sleeping in the kitchen. See, there he is. There he is in that box. Remember that box for the next couple scenes. In the morning, Penelope bravely went to feed Walter his breakfast, but all she found was a banana lamp. <gasps> Crash! The banana lamp was broken, but at least it wasn't Walter. Wait, Walter? Walter was missing. What would her classmates say? Walter? He was her responsibility. Walter? She had to find him. Walter! She looked high. Walter! She looked low. Walter? She checked the neighbor's fish pond. There you are, Walter. But <gasps> you're not Walter, or you, or you. You're not even a fish. None of you are Walter. And you're a hamster. <clears throat> Walter! And 
Penelope had to face the facts. Walter was gone. Walter, with his thoughtful eyes and graceful fins, his teeth that you didn't even use for biting all that often. Besides, who hasn't wanted to eat a classmate every now and then? Maybe Walter wasn't so scary. Maybe Penelope even missed him. If you look closely, you can see she's taken that drawing that she made of Walter, and we're going to zoom in on it for this next page. Now it is just things about Walter by Penelope graceful fins, thoughtful eyes, jolly belly, bitey teeth that don't bite often. Then Penelope noticed something, something fishy. Walter! Oh, there's my old banana lamp, said Daddy Rex. I was going to bring it to the donation center, but I see you had other plans for it. If you look closely, you can see there's Walter in the back of his car there in, that, in the trunk. Walter said nothing. He was a goldfish. For the rest of the weekend, Penelope managed to have some fun taking care of Walter. Good morning, Walter. She was proud of herself and ready to face some of her other fears too, especially the one about stepping on a crack. Penelope tried it and her mom was fine. Penelope's parents were proud too. You did a great job taking care of Walter. We've decided you are responsible enough to have a pet of your very own. The end. Well, thank you very much for listening to that story. Oh, you know what? I, I told you I was gonna draw something right after finishing it, but I do wanna show you something. The very last page of that book, when that saber tooth cat's coming through the door here, that is a sneak peek of Penelope's next book. It is all about that saber tooth cat right there. I'm not gonna tell you too much about it other than his name is Mittens and he is lots of trouble. All right, let's draw Penelope together. So I am going to draw on this easel here. I'm gonna bring this a little bit closer so you can see it. There we go. Let's see, I think that's visible. That's a little better. So let's see, Penelope starts off as a few regular shapes. She's gonna start off kind of like a squished letter C. So we're gonna draw the letter C right here, up near the top of the piece of paper. There we go, a squished letter C. So, you know, C's don't usually stick out that far. Now what we'll do, is we're going to take this and bring it around and kind of make a mirror image of it right over here. And we're going to go right past that bit. It almost looks like a word balloon. Now we're going to make a little backwards letter C right there. That's going to make the corner of her mouth. Penelope has beady eyes. So we're going to draw a beady eye right there. We're going to color that in mostly all black. You might leave a little few shiny spots here and there. There we go, that's the basic shape of her head. We're gonna add some more stuff. She's got a little happy eyebrow right there. She's got a little chin right here. Kind of like that with a neck under it. And Penelope's head is yellow on the back and then white on the front. So she's got a little line that separates where her scales go from yellow to white. And she has freckles. So we're gonna add a few freckles on here to some polka dots, some freckles, kind of like that. And she has scales that run down the top of her head, right down into her, the bottom of her neck right here. Now, this is the easy part for drawing Penelope. So any kids, if you want to stop at this part, you can. This is how I draw Penelope when I am signing a kid's book. So if a kid buys a Penelope book from me, I will draw this and then I sign my name underneath it. But for you, for here, for now, I'm going to finish this drawing. Uh, it's going to be a little more complicated, and it might be hard to keep up. So you could end here if you want to, and that is totally great, and that is totally up to you. So for the rest of her body, we're going to start by drawing a little tiny T-Rex arm right there, little T-Rex arm. And then we're going to draw the overalls. This is where it gets complicated. She's just got a little lump, a little, uh, little bit that goes over her shoulder here. That's a top strap. 
And then this strap follows down to here and she's got some buttons that go right in front of her arms, kind of like that. And then she's got a big pocket on the front of her overall for storing things like art supplies and maybe fun rocks or a frog or two. A little pocket right there, there's that pocket. And the back of the overalls kind of come right around to there. That's the basic shape. And then she's got wide pants because she has giant feet. She's got knobbly knees. And we got to make nice wide openings to her pant legs because her big feet have to stick out of there. So her big feet have to be really big so that they can balance out her giant head. Otherwise, she'd tip over. And then she's got a tail that comes out the back here, comes like that. And we're gonna follow down her back with those scales that she had on her head. Like that, a couple of lines in there. And she's got more freckles on her tail. And that is kind of how I draw Penelope. We're gonna add a few more bits that you do not have to follow along with. You can if you want to, I'm just adding some shading. So with this marker, it's really fat one way, but if you turn it the other way, it becomes thin. So I'm turning it to the side so that I can add a few more little, it's just little shading marks to make it look a little more interesting. You can add this stuff if you want to, you don't have to. And then I put some on her nose. The nose shading part is the most difficult shading part because if I do it wrong, I make Penelope look like she has a mustache. We don't want her to have a mustache. Mustaches are cool and all. Sometimes I have them. It's just that she's, you know, she's a T-Rex and I don't think that they have mustaches. And let's call that done. All right, I'm gonna sign my name right here. And now it's a great time to get Anne to come back so that we can chat some more and answer some questions. Anne, are you there? I am, I am, Ryan, and I have to show you oh, my Penelope. Nice. Now, I feel like I got the head, I was working on my shading, but you were right, getting those overalls was a little bit tricky, but a fun right. challenge. And I can't believe I just got to draw Penelope nice with you, Ryan. Well, good job. I, can you hold it up again, Anne? I was, I think that was an excellent drawing. I mean, really, you really nailed like so many of her features and you gave her a great big pocket on the front. I think that she just has a lot of stuff in the pocket in your drawing. In, oh in my gosh. One, How, right, right. I mean, yeah. pockets are really, really handy, but yeah. I can imagine the folks out there doing a step-by-step -step drawing with you. That was so cool. Thank you, Ryan. Well, thank you. And thank you, kids, for drawing along. I, I, I can't wait to uh, see what you've done. And I, I hope that you enjoyed drawing along. And, you know, maybe you can teach your friends how to draw Penelope. Well, speaking of seeing those drawings, friends, it is time. It is time to capture this amazing moment with Ryan. So we want you to grab your cameras, gather in front of your screens in the classroom, strike a pose wherever you are, if you're at school, if you're at home, and get ready to smile. We're going to give you a few seconds to get set up. Cue the music.
Oh my gosh, Ryan, thank you so much for being here. I know folks out there are having so much fun and learning a lot. And um, sneak peek of a new pet, that's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, folks, we would love to see those selfies, your drawings, so be sure to share them with us on social. You can tag us on Twitter by using at Microsoft Flip, tag our good friend at Ryan T underscore Higgins, and of course, our friends at Disney Books. Now, Ryan, it's time for some questions, and we actually are going to start with a video question for you. Roll the first one. Hi, my name is Arjun from New York. If you could hang out with any of your characters, who would it be and why? Hi, Arjun. Great question. Ryan, the question is, if you could hang out with any of your characters for a day, who would it be and why? Ooh, that's a tricky one. I think I have two answers. Um, my first answer is I think that I would probably hang out with Nibs the Mouse in the Bruce books um, because he has really cool hats. And um, if you look closely, they're actually mostly my hats. So Nibs wears this hat. Nibs is mostly me. Um, so I think that we would get along pretty well. But my other answer is inside the Penelope books, there are a couple children in Penelope's classroom who are actually my own children. So I think to, you know, to be fully honest, I would like to hang out with my own children as much as possible. So I think I would pick them in there. Yeah. Those are fun little illustrations people can hunt for when they're looking at the pages of the book. The hats on nibs, everybody imagine the hats that Ryan is wearing, that's so cool. Okay, we have a question from the chat. We have a viewer, Rahim, who is asking, saying, hello, Ryan, where do you get your inspiration from? Oh, excellent question. Um, so. I have, you know what, I have two answers to that too. I have the real answer, and how do I come up with ideas for books, and I have the fun answer. And I'm not gonna tell you which one I'm saying. You have to, you have to figure that out on your own. Okay, here's one answer. The third Tuesday of every month, I hike up a mountain in my town. It's called Mount Agameticus, and I meet an elephant on the top of it. Her name is Gertrude. And Gertrude has a bucket filled with book ideas on the end of her trunk. And she lets me take one book idea home every month. So it's on the third Tuesday. Do you think that's the real answer? No, no, that's the fun answer. The real answer as to how do I um, come up with book ideas is I don't know. Yeah, I wish I had a thing that I did that helped me come up with book ideas, but they just pop in my head. I have found, though, um, that good inspiration for me is reading lots of books. I, it doesn't always mean I come up with a book idea, but reading lots of books helps my brain, you know, think of stuff and lots of fun, active things outside. So I do lots of running, lots of hiking and biking and playing around with my dogs. They're actually in the studio today, but they're hiding. One's under my desk. She might come out at some point. Um, so I just do lots of fun, active things outside and I try to read a lot of books. And from time to time, I go hang out with an imaginary elephant on top of a mountain. I love that. All the possibilities, you never know where your imagination might strike and you might get that inspiration from, right? So, Ryan, Ms. Rosenstein's class, hello, third graders out there in Ms. Rosenstein's class. They are wondering, how long did it take you to make such a remarkable book? Oh, well, for that, thank you. That's a very complimentary question. Um, so let's see, um, every book takes me a different amount of time. Um, usually though, they're about three or four months is how long it takes for me to um, write and illustrate them. Although they'll start as ideas and those ideas will stay in my head sometimes for a few years. So from the moment it pops in my head as an idea to when it comes out as a book, that can take dramatically different amounts of time. But once I start writing it, once I start doing the first draft to when I'm finished drawing the pictures, that's about three or four months. That seems like a pretty long time for something you can read in, you know, 10 minutes. Um, 
one of the reasons it takes me a while is that I do lots of editing and revising. So kids out there, if your teachers have you do drafts, like a first draft and a second draft, they aren't just giving you extra work to do. They're making you better writers. So every time I write my story and fix it up and write it again and fix it up and write it again, that makes my story a little better each time. So I do lots of editing, lots of revising and drafts with the help of my editor at my publishing company. Um, and um, after that, I do kind of the same thing with drawings. So my drawings usually start off as a pencil drawing, which is just a rough sketch with a pencil. And then I will ink it kind of like how I did with, with on that one there. I use a, a special pen, but I don't do it on paper. I do it on my computer. I have a special pen that I draw with and a special program. Um, and after I do the inking, I'll color it. Um, so writing usually takes me a month or two and drawing usually takes me two or three. So all together, three or four, sometimes five. Great question. It is always cool to hear about your process. So thank you for sharing that. And the encouragement about editing and doing it over and over. That's fantastic encouragement. Yeah, it's an important one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have a video question from some friends in Florida. Let's roll that tape. Hi, I'm Shalane from Florida in the United States. Ryan, when you're not writing or illustrating, what do you like to do for fun? Do you have any hobbies or interests that might surprise us? Oh, this is a great question from our friends in Florida. When you are not writing or illustrating, what are your hobbies or interests? What do you like to do for fun? Yeah, um, I really like uh, outdoor stuff. So I really like hiking and I really like running and biking. Um, I always have my dogs with me when I am running or hiking. The two dogs that are with me today, who again, they aren't coming out from under my desk to say hi, they are little old dogs and they can't run that fast anymore. But we have a younger dog and um, he runs next to me either while I'm running or when I'm biking. And that's lots of fun. I bike all over town with this big, um, he's a husky mix with this big wolfy looking dog that pulls me on my bike. So that's one of my favorite things to do is to get pulled around on my bike or on my cross country skis. Um, yeah, so I like doing outdoor stuff. That, great question. That's so cool. And shout out to Miss Traverso's class in Bellevue, Washington. I know that they were very interested in knowing if you had any pets of your own. All your books have animals. So they just got to hear a little bit about the dogs that you have. We know pets are so special. Um, I'm going to just share Ms. Kovacs class. Ryan, these are some second graders who were curious how old were you when you illustrated your first book? Oh, great question. Um, so the first book I ever wrote and illustrated um, was when I was in the first grade. So it was not published. It was not, you know, it wasn't part of my job. It was just a thing to do for fun. And that was around the age I knew I wanted to grow up to be a cartoonist, to grow up to make uh, books. So I was in the first grade and I wrote this little book called moon frog and the moon gold and um it's actually you know what it's, it's kicking around here somewhere if i can hmm. oh here it is hold on just a sec back here it's just right here so it it is it was just this little book that i made um i i I wrote it on a piece of paper and then someone in my school like there was a volunteer at my school now i am going to tell you that i'm I, I'm not super young kids. When I was your age, they had typewriters in schools. They did not yet have computers. That happened when I was maybe in third or fourth grade. So when I was in first grade, um, a volunteer from the school actually uh, typed up a story that I wrote and they 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 folded it up with, with, they folded up the paper and then they stapled it together and made a, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but they just, so they just folded up paper paper that's been stapled and um the drawings aren't aren't super great i was only a first grader uh and they put cardboard on the outside and then they put wallpaper on the outside of that and it made this cool little heart cover book and between first grade and probably i don't know fifth or sixth grade i made dozens of these it was just my favorite thing to do my mom kept all of them and some of them are in the studio with me now that is so special to get to see that first book, Ryan. Oh my goodness, thank you for sharing that. 
That's so cool, literally, to have them all and that your mom saved them. That's, oh my gosh, that's so special. Um, we have a video. We have some friends in Pennsylvania who are very curious. Um, I know there's a video. Let's see it now. Hi, I am Riley from Pennsylvania. Do you have any tips for kids who want to write or illustrate their own books? Yeah, very curious on these pro tips from you yeah. for young folks who want to write or illustrate their own books. Yeah, so it was was it Riley? I think Riley from Pennsylvania. Yeah, so thanks for that question. Um, yeah, I would say the best thing to do is read a lot of books because there's there's the best way to learn about something is just to experience that thing. So if you want to write books, read lots of great books. If you want to illustrate, look at lots of great pictures and great paintings. When I was um, younger, I learned to draw from, I took art classes, I took like art summer camps, but one of the most, the, the most important things that taught me how to draw was I copied some of my favorite cartoons. So, um, like Calvin and Hobbes was my favorite thing ever when I was a kid. So I would draw Calvin and Hobbes all the time. I would look at them and I would draw them. So that was that was sort of one way that I developed my illustration style. And as for writing, I I think just the best the best advice I had is just to write a lot. Write a lot, draw a lot, and share it with your friends because getting feedback from your friends or family is a great way to find out what other people like and what they enjoy. And um make your own books i mean make books that's do stuff like this nowadays you can go out and you can go to a you can go to a uh, like an art supply store and they'll sell blank books they'll be like 32 pages where it's just every page is white and the cover is white you can draw all over that and write all over it and make your own books and just get lots of practice doing that and share it with your friends those are fantastic tips and words of encouragement, Ryan. Thank you. Um, I wanted to take a moment and ask before we wrap up if you have any final thoughts you'd like to share with all of the young readers who are watching now. Yeah, um, you know, one question I get asked sometimes is how much do I think of my audience while I'm writing? And I think it's very important for, I do think of my audience after I've made a book like who's gonna like it. But when I'm making the book, when I am doing an art project or if I'm creating something, I don't think about what other people will think about the book. I do that stuff for me. So when I am making a book, that is me having fun. All the jokes are things I think is funny and all the, you know, all the drawings are things that I want to be drawing. And I will make a book and then someone will come along and say, that book is for kids. So I, I make this stuff for me. And I think kids, when you are working on stuff that you enjoy, make it for you. Don't really worry about what other people are gonna say or what they're gonna think. Um, art in general, writing, all those are you know artistic things. They're for you, the creator, while you're making it. So just have fun, enjoy making your stories and drawing your pictures or whatever art it is that you do. There's many forms of art. Just enjoy it and have it be for you. Brilliant advice. Wow, Ryan, thank you, because I know that message comes directly from your heart. And I simply want to say thank you so much for joining us today, for, for sharing all the joy and laughter that you do through your books with folks around the world. And goodness gracious, getting to spend this time with you today has been so special. Thank you so much. And thank you so, so much for having me. This has been absolutely wonderful. All right, folks. Goodness gracious, I have the biggest smile on my face. This has been so cool. And folks, we want you to remember that learning and inspiration is never over. So we have something really cool for you. You can head to flip.com slash Ryan T. Higgins, and you will find this create and share topic. And you can use this right now. You can use it today. You can use it tomorrow and share and reflect on all that you have learned during today's event with Ryan. Now, you could share your drawing, you could talk about what you've learned, share your reflection, maybe you even create a new class pet or a new illustration. So what you see on the screen is this topic, and remember, you can use it right now. You want to use that link, flip.com slash Ryan T. Higgins, and when you join the group, you click on that big pink button and you're gonna record your response. 
We want you to share and showcase your creativity. Remember, there's all kinds of fun effects you can use inside the flip camera. I love to say push all the buttons. So we want you to have fun when you create and share on flip because the possibilities really are endless. And of course, you can add Ryan's books to your bookshelf, share with your students, your kids at home. You simply go to aka.ms slash Ryan T. Higgins to explore all your favorite books and characters and see some of the upcoming ones too. And even though we're wrapping up for today, remember we have flip events every week. Next week, you don't want to miss out on our visit to the Fantastic Bureau of Imagination with Brad Montague and plan to join us on May 25th to celebrate World Turtle Day with the South Carolina Aquarium. So get ready for some extra fun and learning. Head to aka.ms slash flip events for all those upcoming adventures. We hope you can join in with your class or your kids at home. Friends, that's it for today. I'm your host, Ann Cosma, and on behalf of Flip, Disney Hyperion, and the incredible Ryan T. Higgins, we want to say thank you so much for spending your time with us. We'll see you next time.